So the river's gone down a lot overnight. It's moving a lot slower. <laughs> it's interesting the, the difference just one night makes. Today I'm doing the walk to Scotts Beach. I think it's only an hour there. I've actually done this hike before a couple of times. It's just, it is beautiful. It's, yeah, it's well worth coming out to Karamea just to do a couple of hikes in the area. They're stunning. They are, Karamea is just different to the rest of New Zealand. <laughs> well, I can see my caravan from here. <laughs> and it's still there. <laughs> This is one wild beach, even by New Zealand standards. So I've done what I normally do and I've ended up walking further than planned so I think I've been walking for an hour and a half. I kind of got to Scotts Beach and felt like I could carry on and I knew that there were some amazing Nikau Palms and another swing bridge. So that just means I'm going to have a later lunch than planned. I thought I'd do a quick walk in the morning before moving the caravan but the, the road's closed. I guess it's closed. <laughs> Hello. Um, I was going to go to the the arches. Yeah, no. All closed. Not Is the road just yeah. damaged? Yeah, should be fine for tomorrow. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really think I need to clean the front of the caravan tomorrow. <laughs> I left my GoPro back of the caravan to charge and I kind of wish I brought it with me. I'd forgotten just how uh, intense that drive is <laughs> out to Opara Basin I think it's called. Uh, it's basically single lane, lots of potholes, jutter bars, um, and it's 14 kilometers like that and it just goes on and on because <laughs> you're going about 40 kilometers an hour and some tourists managed to slide off the road and they were kind of half down a bank so pulled over and someone's going to get a tow truck for them uh, yeah the drama and I found out why the road was closed yesterday and it wasn't because of all the rain it was because they were doing a 1080 drop 1080 poison is a touchy subject in certain parts of New Zealand Department of Conservation use it to keep the stoat and rat population down um, because they they go for all the native bird eggs and they just breed like crazy but it's pretty brutal poison and unfortunately other animals that get in contact with it die as well so there is a lot of debate going on <laughs> over this poison but uh, the roads open again today so I'm going for a walk so I think I've been here it might be Four times now and every single time I, 
I, I almost forget what it's like and then I'm blown away yet again <laughs> every time I visit here. It's a special spot. I'm the only one here. <laughs> I guess it's 6 p.m. Everyone else will be thinking about dinner, which I am too. Did you with someone coming towards you and you? Yes, we. I go in. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a bit of adventure for the evening. Driving back, I saw that the couple with the car off the road were still waiting. And since it was getting later and I was the last person in the car park, it didn't seem right to leave them. So I persuaded them to come back with me, but we'd literally nearly reached Karamea when we passed a policeman and I had a chat and he was, he was on the way out to see if he could get the car out. So they jumped out of my car and jumped back into his car. <laughs> so, so I hope they get it out. But um, they were from Japan. They had been studying in Auckland for a year and this was their three month trip around New Zealand before going home and they were very adamant that this was the first time anything like this had happened to them. <laughs> so it, it is a rough road for if, you, if you're not used to that type of road it's, it's probably one of the tougher New Zealand roads to drive on. So today I'm leaving Karamea I'm going to Punakaki which is three three and a bit hours down down the coast it's kind of known for its pancake rocks and i'll be showing you those i've stopped there a few times but i've never stayed and there are a few kind of want to explore the area a little bit more than i have and i was talking to the custodian here about the car that had driven off the road and apparently that's a regular occurrence and the locals are kind of over having to tow people out apparently there are four roads in new zealand that car rental companies tell you not to drive on and that's one of them. Mm. Made it back to Westport and going to collect a parcel that I've had delivered to the Westport post shop. That's one tricky way with uh, living this lifestyle is where do you get your mail and packages delivered to and I figured out that yeah you can uh, get it delivered to the local post shop. Then I'm also going to do some food shopping to last five days and fill up with petrol <laughs> and maybe have lunch and then head off down the road. To be honest I'm always slightly nervous when I pull into a petrol station. The fear of actually hitting something accidentally is always at the back of my mind when I am towing the caravan. But that time I was lucky, I was able to use the kind of the truck petrol stop. Means there's just a little bit more room for me to swing around. And as usual I've tried to go for the most private spot so I've kind of tucked my way myself around a little corner. We'll see what it's like this evening. I am on a slight angle but I just can't be bothered fluffing around with the levelers. <laughs>
Yeah, I could easily stay another day. But I've kind of, yeah, organized it so I can't. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's plenty of hikes in the area. And yeah, plenty of things to do, really. It's on the, it's more of a touristy spot, but you know, there's usually a reason why tourists stop here. <laughs> just a very pretty walk. The path's good, you get good views of the river and it seriously looks like the setting of Jurassic Park. <laughs> and it looks like you can kayak down here. There's a uh, rental company close to the start of this walk so I assume you can go there and sort it all out. That'd be quite fun I think. <laughs> this walk does just keep going and going and going. I think there's a cave in one of the branches and then you have the chance of doing like a three or four hour hike in either direction. So I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna turn around now. <laughs> I'm actually pretty hot now. What a contrast in temperatures from a week ago. So I'm just gonna paddle. <laughs> the water is freezing. <laughs> Doesn't motivate me to properly swim. Plus, there are a lot of people, well, not many, but there's the odd person walking past. And seriously, having my feet in this freezing water has really helped with my uh, temperature. <laughs> and thank you, Alan, Manuel, Pauline, David, William, Bruce Caravans, Kevin, Mike, and all my other patrons. Thank you, guys.